Welcome back to the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Selection Show. Let's now focus our attention on the upper right quadrant. Continue to reveal the tournament brackets from the NCAA and its corporate champion, Coca-Cola. The second overall number one seed is Virginia. The Cavaliers are going to the South region. It's the seventh time they have been a number one seed. We know what happened to them last year. They'll try not to not to repeat. Anticipating a much longer stay in this year's tournament for the Cavaliers. All right. So. The number one seed in the South is Virginia. These first and second round games will take place in Columbia, South Carolina on Friday and Sunday. The Cavaliers are the fourth team out of the Atlantic Coast Conference, and they will meet 16th seed Gardner Webb. The running Bulldogs out of the Big South who beat Radford in the Big South Tournament Final. I think it, they're up for the game. They are up for the game. They've got a terrific player in David Effiani. He's outstanding. A freshman, Jose Perez. This team worked their way through road games in the conference tournament to win the opportunity to be in the field. And they are tough-minded and fun to watch. Congrats to the running Bulldogs of Gardner-Webb. All right, the 8-9 game in the South. The third seed out of the Southeastern is the Rebels of Ole Miss. Coach Kermit Davis, in his first year at Ole Miss, named SEC Coach of the Year. They will meet out of the Big 12, the Oklahoma Sooners, the number nine seed, six NCAA tournament appearances in the last seven seasons. Probably on the friendly side of the bubble, so not a surprise, but one of those power conference teams that was under 500 in its league, we'll see when we find out the second first four pairing, how they divvied up between the power conferences and the mid-majors. All right, these are first and second round games in San Jose on Friday night and Sunday. The fourth team out of the Big Ten, the Badgers of Wisconsin. Ethan Happ, 16th player in Big Ten history, to be a three-time first-team All-Big Ten selection, helps lead the way for the Badgers. They will meet the Oregon Ducks, the number 12 seed, the first team in our brackets here tonight, out of the Pac-12. Oregon returns four games in four days to capture the Pac-12 tournament championship. And very impressive in that championship win over Washington. All right, moving on down. The second team out of the Big 12, Kansas State, the Wildcats, who want to share the Big 12 regular season title, 25 and 8 on the season and 14 and 4 in the Big 12. Not sure if Dean Wade's going to be able to go. You see him right there, bottom right, with that boot on his foot. Be interesting to see if he has a chance. He actually missed the tournament, part of the tournament last year as well. They will play the number 13 seed out of the Big West, UC Irvine's Ant Eaters. They win the Big West regular season title and tournament title, and Clark Kellogg likes them a lot. I really do. I like the way this team defends and rebounds. They play an aggressive style, but they're efficient at the offensive end. The Ant Eaters are positioned to do some damage this season. All right, we move on down the South Region bracket. These are first and second round games to be played in Hartford on Thursday and Saturday. First team out of the Big East on our board, the number six seed. Villanova Wildcats. Coach Jay Wright in his 16th NCAA tournament. Three straight Big East tournament titles. They edged out Seton Hall. Won the Big East regular season title as well. So the Villanova Wildcats all set to make an appearance in Hartford beginning on Thursday. They will go up against the 11th seed St. Mary's Gales out of the West Coast Conference, who upset the nation's number one team, Gonzaga, to win the West Coast Conference Tournament Championship. And the Gales don't look like they're finished quite yet. So if you're looking for bubble teams, they usually go into the 11 and the 12 seeds, but we've got two conference champions there in St. Mary's and Oregon. So it doesn't, like, doesn't look like this is a uh, bubble mystery revealed in this region. Mm. All right, the number three seed. And the fifth team out of the Big Ten, the Purdue Boilermakers, who want to share the Big Ten regular season title. They come into the NCAA tournament having won 14 of their last 17 games. Outstanding job this season by Matt Painter and his staff. They will take on the number 14 seed Monarchs of Old Dominion out of Conference USA, Conference USA regular season and tournament champions. Now to first and second round games in Columbus, Ohio on Friday and on Sunday. Our third team out of the American Athletic Conference, the Bearcats of Cincinnati. They won the American Athletic Conference tournament title, beating top seed Houston. I can't believe Cincinnati is a seventh seed. That is very low, especially considering their win today. All right, they will take on the Iowa Hawkeyes, another team out of the Big Ten. The Hawkeyes 22 and 11 on the year. 10 and 10 in a very tough Big Ten conference. Going back to that Cincinnati comment, I don't think they'll mind heading to Columbus, though. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> You'll make them feel welcome, I'm sure. Now, the number two seed in the South, 
the Tennessee Volunteers out of the SEC, our fourth team out of the SEC. Coach Rick Barnes did a heck of a job this year and came, fell a little bit short in the SEC title game. Yeah, listen, I think they still deserve to be a one seed. They, their losses compared to the other one seed candidates were not nearly as bad. They beat Gonzaga and Kentucky twice, but they're going to be uh, a very tough out. And that certainly clarifies the number one seed picture for those following closely. And who are they going to face? The 15th seed in the South out of the Patriot League, the Raiders of Colgate, who won the Patriot League tournament title. Oh, look at that excitement. 11 straight wins for the Raiders. They've got a dynamic point guard in Jordan Burns and also Rapolis Ivanowskis, a big time versatile wing player for them. This is a team that's got great momentum going into the tournament. All right, so we go back to the top and we do our review. Villanova, you think they come into this tournament with a bit of a purpose? Tell you what, what a job Jay Wright did when you talk about what they lost from a year ago, the leadership of Pascal and Booth, really a huge part the development of their young players to win both regular season and conference championships. Again, remarkable work, outstanding effort by the Wild. Historically, yeah. you look for the 12 seeds and the 13s to pull first round upsets, and I think that's what happens uh, here. I think Oregon beats Wisconsin and UC Irvine, you talked about Dean Wade, uh, being hurt for Kansas yeah. State, so they're uh, a little bit uh, in a weak spot there. So I like those two teams. Well, 12s are fans. 16 and 24 in the last 10 years in this tournament. That's All right, let's slide on to the second half of the South Region bracket. We talked about Villanova and Purdue with a little something to prove. Yeah, definitely. This Old Dominion team has won a number of close games. They've got a dynamic duo and um, Ahmad Cart Caver and also B.J. Stith. But I like what um, Purdue is capable of doing. Good size up front and Carson Edwards is dynamic. A couple of geographic quirks. If it's Villanova and Purdue, Purdue is the higher seeded team, but the game is in Hartford. A little bit of a, a home court advantage. And you talked about Cincinnati and Columbus. If they get Tennessee in the second round, Cincinnati's already hard enough to beat without all those uh, Bearcat fans <laughs> put in your hometown. So that's an interesting wrinkle in the geography.